in math, we encounter binary operations and we deal with them all the time. Things like adding numbers, adding vectors, adding functions, or multiplying, or even composing, all have this behavior of taking in two things, numbers or functions, and giving us back a third. So we want to be able to study these, stuff like addition and multiplication and composition abstractly. We want to understand their behaviors better. And to do so, we need an abstract structure or framework to do that. So the structure we're going to use is something called a group. A group is a pair, a fairly simple object. It's just a pair G with a multiplication. We'll call it a multiplication, but it's a binary operation. Where G is some non-empty set, so it's a collection of objects, numbers or whatever. And this dot is a multiplication. So it takes in two elements of G and gives us back a third, potentially third uh, element of G. And we call it a binary operation. And we want this to satisfy a few properties. So first property is associativity, which says that if I multiply A times B and then C, that should be the same as multiplying B times C and then A. Second property is that there is some E in G, there's some unit, such that when I multiply anything by it, it kind of just vanishes. It doesn't do anything with respect to my binary operation. And lastly, uh, we want that for any element A in G, there is some inverse element, uh, A inverse, such that when I multiply A and its inverse in either order, I get back to this unit element E. Okay, so the first property is called associativity. Uh, basically says we don't, doesn't matter how we bracket our multiplications. Second one's called identity. And the third one is called inverse. So if we have these three properties, uh, we have a group. And one last property that we'll encounter a lot is if we also have commutativity of the multiplication. So if G also satisfies that for any A, B, and G, uh, their product of A times B is equal to B times A, then it's commutative, but we give it a name. We call it uh, an abelian group. And this is named after a mathematician uh, named Abel. Okay, so this definition is very abstract. And, but in fact, this is a usual starting point for a field called abstract algebra, but it turns out to be a very rich and beautiful world to study. But before we get into any of the beautiful theory, uh, we want to look at some examples because this is, this is a bit too abstract at the moment. So let's see some examples. So the first thing that you probably encounter is the integers. So we usually denote the set of integers by this bold Z. And I claim that they're a group under addition. So if we take our binary operation to be plus instead of a multiplication, then Z with plus is in fact, it's an abelian group because the addition is commutative. So let's check. So we just basically go through the properties. We already know Z is uh, a, a non-empty set and plus is a binary operation. But just as an example, if I add seven plus two and then add three, that's the same thing as two plus three and then adding seven. Um, so it doesn't matter how I bracket that. And that's the same for any three integers. So a plus b and then plus c is the same as a plus the result of b plus c. So that's g1 satisfied or associativity. For g2, we can take that unit element to be zero, that identity element. And then we see that that satisfies the property that five plus zero is zero plus five is five or worse for anything other than five as well. So a plus zero is zero plus a, which is a. 
So that behaves like how we want E2 in G2. Okay, so it has an identity, it's associative, and we want inverse as next. So if A is any integer, let's define this A inverse to be negative version of A, or, or negative A. Then A plus negative A is zero. Or just as an example, five plus negative five is zero. Okay, lastly, uh, to show that it's abelian, uh, I mean, we know that if I add 5 plus 7, that's the same thing as 7 plus 5, and it, that works for any two integers. So a plus b is b plus a. So in fact, we've checked all of the properties of a group, and an abelian group. So z with addition is an abelian group. Okay, so notice that the addition works the same way in the rational numbers or uh, the real numbers. So you can go through these properties, and maybe we could have started with the real numbers, uh, but Q, which is a set of rational numbers, and R, which is a set of real numbers with addition, are also abelian groups for the same logic, same, same stuff that we've just done. And if you're familiar with vector spaces or linear algebra, um, any vector space, uh, if you've looked at the abstract definition of a vector space, you'll notice that the first few properties are exactly saying that any vector space with vector addition is an abelian group. Okay, so let's look at four. Uh, let's look at a non-example next. Uh, Z with multiplication is not a group. So can you see which property fails? So we have a set that's not empty. We have a binary operation. So one of those Gs uh, should fail for this combination. So we can, we can go through the list. So G1, it's definitely true that uh, the multiplication is associative. And we can take E to be one. So Notice that a times 1 is the same as 1 times a for any integer a. So it does have a unit, so it satisfies g2. Um, okay, so maybe g3 is the problem. And indeed, this one fails. So this is the inverse demand. So there's no integer inverse for 2, for example. So there's no integer k such that 2k is k times 2, which is 1. And you can see that on the left, I'll have an even number. On the right, I'll have an odd number. There's no way to make that work in the integers. So, and maybe I'll point out another special case. Uh, there is no integer l such that 0 times l is l times 0, which is 1. Because on the left, I'll have 0. On the right, I'll have 1. 0 is not 1. So the integers fail to satisfy this inverse property. And for this latter example, uh, Q with a, a multiplication and R with multiplication are also not uh, groups uh, because they have this zero problem as well. But if we remove the zero problem, so if we take if we take R and remove zero and Q and remove zero. I'll remove zero there, and we look at their sets with multiplication, then these are, in fact, abelian groups. And can you see why that's the case? So it's going to be picking the same properties that we've been doing. Okay, so those are kind of the standard examples that you've encountered a lot. Uh, let's look at a slightly stranger example, which you may not have encountered, uh, at least formally. Um, and I'm going to use this set that I'm going to call Z sub n. So that Z is the same as the integers. I'm going to take all the integers. So the set Zn is all the integers from 0 to n minus 1. So there's only n of these integers. And I'm going to define this special plus, plus with a subscript n. 
to have the or to be defined by a plus subscript n b is the remainder when uh, a plus b the usual plus is divided by n so you might recognize this as like a mod function so for example uh, if n is 5 let's say and we look at 3 and 4 so 3 plus sub 5 of 4 uh, is the remainder when 3 plus 4 which is 7 is divided by 5 so that has a remainder 2 when I divide that by 5 so in this arithmetic 3 plus 4 is 2 which is a little strange or another nice example, 4 plus sub 5 is, uh, 4 plus sub 5 of, uh, uh, 4 plus 1 sub 5 is 0, so excuse me. Then I claim this pair is an abelian group. So Zn with plus sub n is an abelian group. So we give this guy a name, uh, we call this a cyclic group. It has special uh, relations with rotational symmetries of n-gons uh, and this is the place where we do modular arithmetic or we sometimes call this mod n. We'll come back to this in a future video. Okay one last example. Uh, again if you're familiar with linear algebra then you might have dealt with multiplying matrices and in particular, you might have encountered the idea that if I multiply two matrices, A times B, I don't always get that that's equal to B minus A. Sometimes I do, but it's mostly not true. So it's not necessarily true that uh, A times B is equal to B times A. So in fact, this set GLN of R with this multiplication is a non-abelian group. So we've seen all, all abelian groups up until now, but this is a non-abelian one, so it's not commutative. So this GLN of R is the set of invertible n by n matrices with real entries, and the multiplication I'm taking is the matrix multiplication. So you can check that that's a nice group as well. Okay, so what well, things to think about? Uh, can you come up with your own uh, group examples? And as a challenge to you, uh, can you think of how uh, or when Zn take away zero with a multiplication mod n? So that should have a, a dot sub n is a group. So this is just a taste for now. We'll come back to them later and mostly study finite groups, but there's plenty of, of stuff to study uh, herein and new ways of thinking.